Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan and today we're going to be talking about something a little different. This right here is a Creality Ender 5 S1 3D printer and today I wanted to show you guys just how you can actually use a 3D printer just like this one to make some awesome decorations for your home theater space. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, this right here is the Creality Ender 5 S1, which was sent over to us by Creality to take a look at. And the first thing that I wanna say before we talk about anything else is that we've actually used a couple of Creality's printers in the past, which we've personally bought with our own money to make some really cool movie prop collectibles for our theater room here. And we've been really happy with the performance of their machines. For example, this Mjolnir hammer from the Thor series of movies was actually made using these two Ender 3 3D printers and then painted using a variety of metallic and colored paints to accurately replicate the look of the actual hammer. And we're really happy with this result. We used a lot of plastic to make it so it's actually pretty hefty and it's held up pretty well over the years. I also made the body of this basic Stratocaster electric guitar on my Ender 3s and while it took a lot of time and plastic to get put together properly, this is probably my favorite example of just what's possible with 3D printing. Same with this Terminator T800 head, it's just two pieces that were glued together and painted with this really nice silver metallic chrome paint and it's also been a really cool addition to our theater. So if you're interested in learning how you can make your own kind of props like these for your own home theater without shelling out for official merchandise, which can easily set you back hundreds of dollars just for individual pieces, and you're willing to get your hands dirty, then let's talk about the printer itself. The Ender 5 S1 is an aluminum framed FDM 3D printer, meaning it melts a big roll of plastic called filament in sort of the same way that a hot glue gun would melt a stick of glue. The motion system is a traditional Cartesian design, so there are dedicated motors directly controlling the X, Y, and Z axes to determine where the plastic should be laid down by the printer. This makes it pretty comparable to a printer like the earlier Ender 3, which I have here, but the Ender 5 S1 does bring some massive improvements to the table that will directly impact the user experience. For example, the built-in color touchscreen and full-size SD card slot make starting prints way more convenient. I also really like the box design here where the bed itself moves up and down rather than the design of the Ender 3, which has the bed moving forward and back, meaning the amount of mass and thus the inertia on the Y-axis can change during a print, which can compromise quality. The Ender 5 S1 also just looks like a way cleaner and more professional build, which may be pretty important to some people. You also get some other really nice features like a filament runout sensor, a pretty nicely built hot end with a beefy part cooling fan, metal magnetic build plate, and USB-C for interfacing to a computer rather than the fragile micro USB or mini USB of many older printers. Now I just want to make it clear here that I'm basing everything I say in this review relative to my experience with the printers that I've personally spent a huge amount of time with, the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. I know there are a lot of other exciting options on the market right now and it's definitely worth doing as much research as you can into finding the right machine for your use case. But with all that out of the way, let's get into the actual assembly process, which was pretty straightforward. Creality ships this printer in a very dense packing foam that keeps everything from shifting around, and it did a perfect job protecting everything in our kit. They also included all the tools you'll need to put it together, along with a pretty robust manual. In total, we probably spent about two hours putting this together, including all the cabling and first calibration, which is pretty good in our opinion. Everything was very well laid out and we didn't run into any major issues during the whole process. Our first print also went just fine, so with the actual printer set up and ready to go, we went ahead and connected the Creality Sonic Pad here, which is a larger touchscreen add-on for some Creality printers, including this one, which allows you to use the printer over Wi-Fi, and it gives you some other really nice features as well, like graphical 3D bed leveling and USB ports if you want to load models from a regular USB stick, rather than the built-in SD card slot. The biggest feature of the Sonic Pad, though, is the fact that it can act as a controller for printers with the Clipper firmware, which is essentially a replacement for the software built into the Ender 5 S1 that can allow for far faster prints. The Sonic Pad will automatically guide you through the whole Clipper setup process, so we chose not to go through that in too much detail, but there are plenty of helpful guides on the net if you want to get this whole thing working for yourself. 
The basic idea with a 3D printer is that you can take any 3D model, which you can find online or even make yourself using a 3D design software, and convert it into a language that your printer can read using a piece of software called a slicer. The Ender 5 ships with its own special version of the popular Cura slicer called Creality Slicer, and that comes preloaded with configurations made specially for the Ender 5 S1, so I went ahead and installed that so I could start printing my own parts. If you want to find some 3D models to print with a printer like this one, you can pretty much find anything just by searching 3D printed movie prop on Google, and you'll find a variety of free and paid options made by fans and professional prop designers alike who design pretty much any kind of movie prop you can think of. I decided this Baby Yoda model here by LEWJ would be a pretty good place to start, so I downloaded it from the website, extracted my model from the zip, and loaded the file into Creality Slicer. I then scaled it to my liking, and using the default quality settings, click the button to slice the 3D file into a bunch of layers made with commands that the printer can actually understand. Everything looked good to me, so I went ahead and saved that sliced file to a USB stick, loaded it onto the printer, and started the print, which automatically heated up the bed and nozzle before putting down our first layer of plastic. While 3D printing isn't the fastest process by any means, the Ender 5 still managed to get through this in about 8 hours, and the print quality is very impressive. The surface finish looks great with this generic PLA filament, and overall I don't really have any complaints. A lot of this is thanks to the pretty rigid frame here, as well as the inclusion of the clipper firmware when using the Sonic Pad, which optimizes the flow rate of the filament to allow for considerably faster prints at better quality. I'm also really impressed with how the printer handled these huge overhanging areas in the ears. Of course, we did use a little bit of support material, but it came off very cleanly. The first layer is also incredibly smooth thanks to the excellent level done by the auto bed level sensor, and I've never been able to get this nice of a first layer on any printer that I've ever used until now. Having a good first layer is crucial, because if your part is too close it will literally etch itself into the build surface, and if it's too far away your part might become unstuck from the bed and you'll end up with a nice big bound up piece of plastic spaghetti. Not to mention, you also have a pretty decent amount of room to work with. The Ender 5 boasts a build volume of 220 by 220 by 280 millimeters, or 8.7 by 8.7 by 11 inches. So you can pretty much imagine four sheets of 8.5 by 11 printer paper taped into a rectangle, and that's roughly the build area that you could expect from this printer. It's also worth mentioning that in our experience, this printer is way quieter than our older Ender 3s, and honestly, I had no problem running this thing all night in my bedroom about 8 feet away from me while I was sleeping. It really wasn't any kind of a bother, and it's easy to forget that it's even running after a while. So if you want to get started into making props, decorations, or even some really useful things for your home theater or anything around the house, then we can highly recommend the Creality Ender 5 S1, as well as the Sonic Pad. And we think you should give them a go if you want a relatively user-friendly introduction to the hobby. The Ender 5 S1 comes in at an asking price of $559 US dollars, and with the Sonic Pad for an extra $159, it can be a steep investment compared to other machines on the market. But as someone who's had years of experience with the more affordable options, while they're still quite reliable, I'd much rather have the ease of use and convenience of a setup like this over the extra efficiency you might be able to get by having two cheaper printers running at the same time. So if you're interested in getting your own, I'll be sure to leave links down in the description on where you can buy one. And with all that said, I think I'm pretty much done here. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.